The following program is made possible by the friends and partners of GodQuest Ministries. From the CTN studio in Pensacola, Florida, this is Creation Today, where we believe the Bible is literally true and scientifically accurate from the very beginning, and we're not ashamed to say so. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Hoven. And I'm Paul Taylor, and we're here each episode to answer your questions on science and the Bible, cover what's going on in creation today, and why it matters to you. If you have questions, send them in to questions at creation today. If you are a Twitter person, you can Twitter us at creation today. And if you're on Facebook, join us facebook.com slash creation today. Enjoy the show. having a lot of fun on creation today, answering lots of questions on creation versus evolution, science, and the Bible. This month, the month of June, we're offering a special deal that at a ridiculous price, the big three is on sale for just $99. That's my dad's 18-hour seminar series, uh, the beginning series that some guy did named Eric, and the Godonomic series with Chad Hoven, which really does a great job. It provides an answer for the economic problems that we're seeing in our, in our world today. So we're really enjoying that. And you can get that for the month of June. If you're watching this in June, if you're not watching it in June, sorry, you missed out. You'll have to see what we got coming up whenever that time comes. Hey, we got more questions that are coming in from the live broadcast. I am enjoying those. They're, they're great fun. And we had a lot of questions that we didn't get a chance to answer on the, on the live web. Some of you guys are emailing your questions in also, and uh, we're going through those as fast as we can. So if you don't get a response right away, our apologies. We really are working on getting those to you. A question that came in from Richard Enderline, and this is, uh, by the way, um, we did a broadcast where they said, well, how come you're not answering the hard questions? <laughs> and this is one that came in that we saw later, and, and I thought, okay, well, hey, I, I'm going to let Paul tackle this one because it sounds kind of hard. All right, let me, uh, let me throw this one at you. When did the natural nuclear reactor at Oklo, O-K-L-O, occur, and what was its rate of reaction? And what physical evidences lead you to this timeline and conclusion? I think what he's trying to say there is, uh, obviously this took a long time, you're a young earth creationist, how in the world can you fit this into the young earth creation timeline? How does that work? First of all, explain this yeah. to us. The, Try to put this, it down on my level. This is typical of a number of, of questions that we uh, that we get, and of course, the first thing that will occur to our viewers is, what is he talking about? What is <laughs> yeah, o what is uh, Oklo? Most people have not heard yeah. of Oklo. That's for yeah. sure. Well. I'd better give a very brief explanation of what Oklo is. But, don't uh, fall asleep, yeah, by the way. Don't this fall is... asleep. It'll be, it will be very, very brief. <laughs> and the, see, the real point about this is not a scientific point. And uh, we'll come to that in a minute. But please just bear with me for a second. Oklo is a place in uh, the country of Gabon in, uh, in Africa. It's, uh, it's a place where uh, French scientists, uh, uh, the French uh, uh, nuclear industry, mine their uranium. And in the early 1970s, they were, they were mining at this particular spot and uh, uh, digging up uranium, and they, had, they noticed a problem. You see, you, naturally occurring uranium contains two isotopes. Now, don't worry about the word isotopes, two basic two types of atoms of the same element, it uranium. It has nothing to do with yeah. being cold. That's right. And uh, uh, there's uranium-235, there's uranium-238. The percentage of uranium-235 is about 0.72% in naturally occurring uranium. Can so the vast majority down. of it is uranium-238. Okay. But it's the uranium-235 that is useful for nuclear power stations. It's what's known as a fissile material. If you viewed the uh, atom as if it was a sort of lump of plasticine, it, uh, it could be split apart. Uh, so you've got two new smaller atoms. That happens in a nuclear reaction. And uh, the point is that when they dug this up in the early 1970s, they discovered that uh, it, it contained only 0.71% of uranium-235, which doesn't sound a huge difference, but they had to report this under international law because because that is the percentage of uranium-235 you get in, um, uh, in materials come out of the nuclear reactor. So it's already been almost what, yeah. what you would call spent. They've already spent used fuel. it. Spent fuel. 
And now here it is, they Spent can't fuel. use it in the nuclear reactor anymore. So okay. the assumption was that maybe a natural nuclear fission reaction had taken place underground. Nobody's ever seen this happen, but they said that maybe this could have happened, that somehow it could have gone critical by itself underground. In order to go critical, they said it had to be 3% uranium-235. Now, the issue wow. then is, uh, and there is some evidence that maybe this did occur. I'm not saying it didn't occur. Uh, I'm saying we don't know, but there we is some evidence. can rather confirm nor yeah. deny. There is some evidence because a nuclear reaction produces these smaller atoms, various other elements, and those are, some of those are present in the rock. So there's some okay. suggestion it could be true. Um, now, uranium-235 has a shorter half-life than uranium-238. Half-life is a roughly a sort of measure of how fast the thing is disappearing. I know it's more complicated than that, but bear <laughs> with me again. So, uh, in other words, then, as time went on in the back, uh, as time went back, um, you would expect to have more uranium-235 in the past. And so they worked out that uh, in order to have 3%, the amount for critical re nuclear reactions, that would have to be 2 billion years ago. So obviously... So that's, their, that's their calculation. So you see, the Bible can't be true because no. we say it's 6,000 years ago. That's the silver bullet. Yeah, that's the silver bullet. Pack up. We're yeah. done here. And Creation I wonder whether if, if people send us emails or that, they're expecting that reaction, that we'll send I them an email that say, Don't, I am so stupid. <laughs> we, we are are done with creation ministry yeah. now because it's there there it is there's the problem there's is the proof. there is an assumption behind the mm. question the assumption is has these new have these nuclear reactions always been going on at the same time just a quick bit of science here you could look this up on some of the uh, the scientific uh, creation websites uh, for, for instance you could look up the uh, the rate um, uh, uh, material yeah, radioactivity in the age of the earth and you'll see that there is plenty of scientific evidence that suggests that uh, at some point in the past um, um, the half-lives of uh, uranium was faster than it is today so you could have got critical uh, uh, reactions in the past but the real point here is that there is an assumption behind the question this person is assuming something and assuming that when we see this we will immediately throw everything away so what's the whole point about this he thinks he's got a silver bullet at disproves creation and this is the non-scientific bit that's so important for you all to get isn't it and and the point is the real point is we are not going to look at it from that perspective. Yes. We look at it through God's lens, through God's perspective. Yes. So we don't look at the evidence and say, oh, well, maybe the Bible's wrong. We start with God's word is true. God yes. is right. Now, how does the evidence fit with it? Now, That's evolutionists correct. do the same thing. They're looking at yes. everything through their worldview saying, well, I'm not going to believe the Bible and I'm going to say that I don't believe in God, even though they do, Romans chapter 1. And so it really comes down to our presuppositions, what we already believe to be true. Yes. If you were to look at this same thing, exactly what we just talked about, and it looks like it's 2 billion years according to the, 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 the rate of decay and stuff, and you were looking at it through this lens, you're obviously going to say, well, that is incorrect. It is not 2 billion years old. Yes. It doesn't go back yeah. that far. There are plenty of, of scientific explanations if we wanted to look at those where uh, we, we start with the Bible being true. But the question is that the underlying thought behind the question is that the Bible is wrong. That's, yeah. And therefore, that, that's, that, that's what's being stated in this question. We're going to start by saying the Bible is correct. And that's, uh, that's the issue. And then we look at, uh, we look at what, that, what the implications of that are. Now, some of you guys are going to be rather disappointed because you're going to say, well, hang on, I want all the science that proves that this does not... Uh, me and the earth is billions of years old. Give me all the science behind that. And even if we did, you still wouldn't accept creation. That's right. Because it's been done over and over. I could perhaps take you back in time uh, to a time just a few thousand years ago when a nuclear reaction was happening in those rocks. And if you saw that, you'd still say, well, that doesn't explain it. You've got to start by this, per this point now, of that belief. Don't get us wrong. We love evidence. I mean, yes. evidence is great to bolster the Christian's faith. And I believe you really can look at the science behind this. Institute for Creation uh, Research did the Rate yes. Project. Costs a lot of money, by the way. You might want to support them. Uh, Creation.com, some of the scientists with CMI have done some great research on this. So we do have the scientific evidence and the answers. But before we even get to that, in this first segment, we just wanted to emphasize it doesn't matter. We're going on our presupposition God's word. There's no silver bullet against the creation worldview, if you will. There really isn't. Hey, we got more to talk about. A couple more questions we want to answer to get more into this. We'll talk about that right after the break.
Welcome back. You're watching Creation Today with Eric Hovend and Paul Taylor. And you know, Eric, just before the, the break, we were talking about uh, presuppositions behind questions. And the question that we're asked about uh, the Oculo Reactor had a presupposition behind yes. it. That's the point. And a lot of people get really upset and uptight about questions that they're asked. They're thinking to themselves, oh, I, how am I going to manage to have yeah. all the answers available, all the science? What I'm if going somebody to asks me yeah. about the Oklo Reactor? What am I going to say? Exactly. And the point is, um, obviously, it's great if, you, if you've got some answers and, and, and you know the science and use that, but uh, anyone can answer this because the yeah. point is to look at the presupposition. Yeah. And you see, the question had a presupposition that the Bible is not true, that there is no God. But the thing is, that as soon as you have that presupposition, it's the case, isn't it, that you don't really have a basis for what's true and false you anyway. You can't have truth. Exactly. Yeah. That's the whole point of that presupposition is our worldview, our presupposition allows for absolute truth. Absolutely. The atheist or evolutionary <laughs> worldview cannot account for an absolute truth. I got to tell you, I love it every time they say, they, they, we get into this because they'll say, you can't have absolute truth. And all you got to do is say, yeah, are you absolutely sure? Yeah. Are you, how do you know that? Oh, we'll have to talk more about absolutely. that because I love that. Speaking of presuppositions though, we've got a presupposition that God's word is true yes. from the very beginning, the first book, which is Genesis. And we decided... Now we, there it is, would do a project called Genesis. What we're going to do, Paul, is we're taking, as you know, the first three chapters of Genesis and producing it in an animated format like Avatar, where instead of just reading in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, you can watch it happen right in front of your eyes. I'm telling you, this is going to prove to be an incredible project. It's going to take anywhere from 12 to 14 months to complete. But if you want to get more information on that, you can go to GenesisSeries.com, GenesisSeries.com and check that out. It's really, really going to be cool. If you didn't get our uh, current magazine, it's actually a new newsletter slash magazine, so we call it a new zine. That's a cool way to say it. Yeah. So if you didn't get our new zine, you can view it online at creationtoday.org slash current, forward slash current. It's, it's a very exciting project, and it's a, it's a great uh, a great zine, so do please have a look at that. Well, we've been looking at some of the questions that uh, we didn't get time to uh, yeah. answer a couple of weeks ago in the uh, live webcast. And here's one from uh, Sasha, who says, if water shot out when the fountains of the deep broke open, how did it not tip over the ark? Wouldn't that cause a problem? Hmm. You know, I got to say, as we look at this, I'm wondering if Sasha is a believer or an unbeliever. Because if we are going to claim the name of Christ and claim to believe in God and claim to believe in God's word, why would I even ask this question? God said it. That settles it. I heard we were talking to a gentleman earlier. He said, you know, I want to change that bumper sticker. God said it. That's a, uh, I believe it. That settles it. Yes. It doesn't matter if you believe it. Cross out, out the middle phrase. Yeah, yes. Exactly. It, that God settles. said it. That settles it. And it really does. And that's our presupposition. So this question, of course, is assuming maybe God's word could have a problem with yes. Noah's Ark here. And, and, and let's be fair, because this, this may be a Christian who's, uh, who's struggling to, to believe the Bible, wants to believe the Bible, and is, is, is being bombarded by these questions and thinking, well, does this, does this mean that I haven't got the evidence? Uh, does mm. this mean that I haven't got the reason? for this and what we need to, to say is it's not about that it's about right. making sure that you've got your feet planted on the right exactly. foundation the foundation of stone the firm foundation which is the God's word is true and you see if you think about the the question if water shot out when the fountains of the deep broke open you know when um, I was just thinking about one of my uh, children when uh, when he was a small boy. Uh, he was very, very keen on asking what if questions. <laughs> uh, what if, Daddy? What if this happens? What if, uh, you know, what if uh, the sky falls down? What <laughs> if, uh, 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 and you'd give an answer, you know, what's going to happen? Well, well what if this, you know? Um, uh, uh, we're going on holiday. Uh, uh, we, we're going to get in the car tomorrow. We're going to pack it up. But what now, if the car breaks that, down? Is that vacation? Vacation, vacation oh, okay. yeah. Uh, what holiday. if the car breaks down on the way, you know? And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Well, uh, if it breaks down on the way, then we've got the breakdown insurance. But what if they can't find us? <laughs> and, and it was just one, and, and, and I'm being facetious, but that's what we have here. We're saying, I believe you, God, but what if you're wrong? What if the, the ark was on top of a fountain of the deep? The fact is, it wasn't. And what is the purpose of mm. the ark? 
The whole purpose of the ark was that God put it there. Yes, we can look at the science. It was hydrodynamically stable, the right sort of uh, combination of, um, of dimensions, yeah. 300 by 50 by 30, which we know is the best combination of dimensions. It's what shipbuilders use today, today, same dimensions, yeah. But what's the real fundamental point? The real fundamental point is this, that this ark, which was waterproofed all over with pitch, and that word pitch, of course, is used elsewhere in the Old Testament as the word atonement. Really? And you see, the atoning blood of Jesus Christ will fireproof us against the, uh, against, the, uh, against the judgment to come. Just like the atoning covering on the ark waterproofed the ark. The ark is, if you want the technical theological term, it's a type of Christ. Isn't that it? is beautiful. Yeah. I, I had no idea about that. I mean, you're about to start, this whole what if thing is going to bring out the preacher in me, man. I'm ready to start preaching. You need to stop asking what if about God. He yeah. said it. Let's trust. It's not the what is being said it's yeah. who is saying it yes. why are we questioning the creator of the universe why are we questioning who said it yes oh. see um you know i was i was sort of joking about my son of course he's growing up now and he said some he said some wise things he was, he was saying to me just a couple of weeks ago you know you know daddy says the uh, uh, the flood is like a type of the first coming of christ and the second coming of christ and if you're not sure what the term type means you know you can have some stories that are allegorical where they're a story and they have a sort of hidden meaning. Mm -hmm. Now I personally believe there's nothing in the Bible that's allegorical. Um, but there are people who write stories that are allegories. Then of course you've got uh, accounts that are historically true. And when you got to the use of the word type, it's both historically true, it happened, but God put it there for a purpose as well. I was well, going to say, it's almost it, both right there. It, it is both. Yeah. It is both that God did that. So the ark's a real thing, and God put that into history to show us something about the nature of what, yeah. uh, of what he was doing. The flood itself, a uh, type of the second coming in the sense of the judgment of God, and the ark as being the type of the first coming of Christ because we're saved through the flood because uh, and Noah and his family were saved. And do you know why Noah was saved? We read, don't we, in Genesis 6, verse 8. He Noah obeyed, he found grace yeah. in the eyes of the Lord. Right there That's is why God's he grace. Uh, Hebrews tells us that he, he did this. He built the ark through faith. Mm -hmm. Noah was saved by grace through, through faith. faith. Where else do we read that? In salvation. Je we, can have, we can have faith in Jesus Christ by grace through faith. What a beautiful type. What a beautiful picture of something that really took place. Yes. Um, we were talking yesterday about uh, the whole ark thing. And if, if, if somebody found the ark today, would, would we still be able to ask this question? Well, hey, what if, what if the ark got tipped over? Isn't that going to cause a problem? Yes. First of all, the question is doubting God. Yes. That's the, that's the same problem uh, Eve had in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. She, she thought she could decide. She thought she could choose. And, and I realized, you know, we're, we're kind of almost getting t to uh, to a point where it's just so much repetition of why do you guys keep saying, well, you just got to believe the Bible. You just got to believe God. Just give me the science behind it instead. Just just show me the evidence and let me decide for myself if, if the ark really could have been tipped over, if it couldn't have been tipped over. Sometimes it's important for us to repeat those sort of things yeah. over and over again. Like one preacher was asked, why do you keep uh, preaching that you've got to be born again? It's so simple. It's because you've got, you've to, got be to be born, born again. again. That's exactly <laughs> right. And the truth is we've got to trust God and we've got to trust yeah. his word. It's the only thing that makes sense of reality that we see today. Hey, you know, it's exciting to answer these questions on the Bible. We've got lots more questions to answer and we're going to be doing that straight away after this. Our three most popular resources are now available at a special package price. Get our award-winning creation seminar, our beginning series, and our topical Godonomics series, all for just $99. For answers about creation, evolution, and dinosaurs, thousands around the world have turned to Dr. Kent Hovind's fast-paced, fully illustrated creation seminar. It's our most requested resource and now features 31 foreign language subtitles. For a creation experience for groups, Eric Hoven's Beginnings series includes a handy guide that provides practical ways to apply each lesson to everyday life. Hear what the Almighty says about the Almighty Dollar in our new topical DVD, Godonomics, a fun, engaging, fact-filled journey into God's wisdom on money. For a limited time, get all three resources for just $99. To order, call 1-877-479-3466 or visit creationstore.org for the Big Three Package. 
Welcome back to Creation Today, where we are answering your questions about creation, evolution, science, and the Bible. I am joined by Paul Taylor, and I'm Eric Hovind. Got another question here that we wanted to get to in just a couple minutes. Uh, let's see here, question number three. What was created on the first day of creation? Just light, or the earth, or both? Paul, what was made on the first day of creation, and how would we have this knowledge? Well, the only way that we can find out what was created on the first day is science through... experiments. That's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we need to we need to go back and come up with a hypothesis and test our hypothesis, and we need to look at the things in nature to discover this. Right. It's That's a how bit. We... It's a bit like how we would do an experiment to find out, you know, that I was born in England 27 years ago. You know, in the same way. 27 years. Ago? Wait a minute. 27? Uh, Dude! Maybe the experiment's not quite okay. right, but okay, but a, a bit longer. <laughs> okay, a, a bit, bit longer than 27. Bit long, uh, 27, and some months. And some months, and some right. Months, yeah. <laughs> quite a lot of some months. <laughs> well, you know, you could, you could do some experiments, measure the wrinkles on my eyes, count how fast they're appearing, and then you would extrapolate them back in time, and you could calculate exactly when I was born. That's right. That's, it. that's, a that's how we would find out. No. Trouble is, there's nobody alive today who was in the room when I was born. Oh. My mother's died. My father wasn't allowed in the Well, he's died as well, but he, he wasn't allowed in the room. They didn't allow people in the room that day. The in the 1800s, wives. it was a totally different That's world. That's right, thing. yeah. There was no science in those days. <laughs> it was a, and, and the leeches, obviously, were, were, were a real problem. But what's the best way to find so out there's when no you were science born? experiment we could do. So I could prove, nevertheless, I proved to you that I was born on a particular day in Manchester, and I do that not by a science experiment, but by giving you a document. Mm. And that document is called a birth certificate. Ooh, because birth idea. certificates are not different difficult to find. <laughs> Unless you're the president of the United yeah. States. I wasn't, wasn't going to say oh, that. Oh, okay. Now, I'm an American. I'll say it. Yeah, you're here on a So visa. you see, the, the serious point is we don't do the science experiments to go back and to find out what happened on the first day. Uh, have we got a document around that will tell us? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, there it is. There right it is. Here. There it is. Just a, just a minute. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. And for then, um, so if we look in and uh, we look in at the Book of Genesis, and it tells us, and uh, uh, we're being facetious. And we I'm are, sorry but we're it's being fun. facetious. Uh, uh, but it really is serious. There's a serious and, point. And I, I realize this is a serious question that some people have. Hey, what really yes. was made on day one? Was it the light, the earth? What exactly? And they're, they're, I think the reason they're probably asking yes. that is because as you read forward later on, it yes. says he formed the earth and things well, like that. This is the issue, you see, and it very clearly tells us in uh, the first few verses that the earth was made on the first day. In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth, and uh, that means everything that's everything. been made, and, uh, uh, and that, God, uh, uh, that God made light, let there be light. So we know those things. Uh, so again, I'm assuming that this person can read this in, in the uh, Bible. I really don't want to be facetious again about this. I'm assuming it's there. So there is a presupposition behind the question, which is, did it actually happen the way that it says here, or is there some hidden meaning that they've missed? Right. And folks, it happened the way it said. What are the first four words? Because the first four words are so important, aren't they? In the, the beginning, God. What is, the, what is the importance of that statement? You see, if we were talking about what actually happened, what was the evidence, what can, what can we work out scientifically? If, if, if that's what was in God's mind about, how, what, what, uh, about what we what should be doing we here, then see. the Bible would have been given to us differently. And you see, the Bible then would have started with a huge long essay. <laughs> know. You know, when I was told to write essays, how, how were you taught to write essays? I was always taught, you know, you start by putting the arguments on one side, you put the arguments on the other side, and you bring a conclusion. So you start with you know the existence of God. Then uh, let's have the arguments Here's in the favor, truth, arguments against. against what's the yeah? What 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 is the balance after we take all these pro and con arguments? Okay, are you left with more pro arguments or more con yeah. arguments? Which cancels each other out? The issue is the Bible doesn't do that. It do never. The Bible starts by saying, "In the beginning, God." It it makes a an assumption right there or a statement right there that we don't have there is no argument in God's word for the existence of God. And this is just an interesting point as we get to what he made on day one. So many Christians try to argue for the existence of God and try yes. to give people evidence of God when the Bible says they already believe in him. Because the evidence does not make sense without the presupposition. 
Because, you know, if you, if you could present that evidence, if you do that in the absence of God, then how can you possibly trust that evidence anyway? Yeah. Because the evidence only has sense and meaning with the presupposition that God's there. Because as we were just saying before, the, without God, there are no absolute truths. Uh, the absolute truth is there because of God. Exactly. Uh, you know, and in the worldview, therefore, of the non-Christian, uh, or let's, or let's be honest, because there are many Christians who can't get this idea and they think, well, God, uh, there's all this impression given that God sort of let things go and then he's mm. just sort of stepped back and watched it. Yeah. And really, actually, they are practically atheists. They might say they believe in God, but they don't believe that God's got anything to do with it. They things. don't act as if he really did it the way he said he did it. They, yeah. So in that case, there is no basis for these people. There is no basis for them to say what's absolutely right. There is no mm. basis for uh, that the, the can underline their statements of what's true and false. And every time they make an absolute statement of here's something that happened, here's a piece of evidence, they're actually standing on God. They're That's standing right. on this foundation, this very foundation. Now, for the Christians out there that say, okay, okay, Eric and Paul, I believe in God. I got all that. Okay, I know he's there and I know everybody believes in him. What did God make on day number one? Well, it, we, we have to read here, God made, uh, God created the heavens and the earth. And the point there is uh, that it's a, it's a phrase that's used in the Bible quite a lot. And it's actually not just a Hebrew phrase. We get the same sort of thing in English. It's where you've got uh, sort of, in a sense, two extremes of the spectrum and everything between. You know, the house I used to live in in England, you might have difficulty understanding this, but it was three stories. <laughs> Strange tall houses they had yeah. there. And just supposing that I'd lost something and I said, well, I've searched high and low. Does that mean I searched only on the first floor and on the third floor? <laughs> and I, I ignored the second floor? Of course not. I no. searched on the second floor too. So when I said I searched high and low, it's everything in between. Uh, Jesus did mm. the same sort of things. You know, the, the, um, uh, the Old Testament uh, comprises of uh, uh, the law, the writings, and the prophets. When Jesus said, uh, you know, look at the law and the prophets, he wasn't missing out part of the Old Testament. Not that phrase we know right means everything, mm. the whole lot. And in the same way, God made the heavens and the earth. It means he made everything. Now, one thing I find interesting, because some people will argue, well, how do you have light without the sun? If the sun wasn't made till day four of creation, where's the light coming from? Well, again, there's a, there's a presupposition there that, that, that we can't accept what's said if we don't have the, uh, 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 the, uh, the thought behind yeah. it. But again, what is light? Light is, is a waveform. It's a waveform. There's a magnetic field which is beginning to wave. And a uh, particle. God made that happen. God made that happen. And he said that he made light, and he said that he made the actual sources of those lights on day four. Again, he said that, there is no reason not to believe it, because there it is, and that's the order that God chose to create things in. And you can check out more on creationtoday.org. I love the difference between or and mayor, the light yes. and the source of the light. There's some, some really, really There's good stuff There's a huge amount there. we can talk about there. But. Ah. But we're out of time for today's episode. So thank you so much for joining us uh, here on Create Creation Today. If you have questions, send them into questions at creationtoday.org. Remember, you can Twitter at Creation Today, or you can ask on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash creation today. Hard to say, isn't it? it Tune is. in each week to see if we've answered your questions. And of course, the programs are archived online at creationtoday.org. Well, this has been a production of God Quest Ministries. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you very soon on the next episode. God Goodbye. Bless.